All right, everyone, we are back for our third session of what was happening in Kenny Bunk's uh, history. I'm here with my sister, Catherine, who is tuning in from California. I myself is, am sitting right here in the Brickstore Museum. If you haven't visited recently in the past two years, um, we've moved our stairway. We used to have something called the Gone with the Wind stairway in the center of our gallery. It is now removed um, and placed back uh, where it was historically. So that is where it is behind me. Um, and this gentle lady who is over my, uh, my shoulder is <laughs> Edith Barry, who was the founder of the Brickstore Museum in 1936. So speaking of history, um, I mentioned in my introduction that uh, Old Lang Syne is a kind of the theme song for um, New Year's Eve, as it were. And it basically, uh, if anybody has looked up the uh, lyrics or knows the lyrics already, uh, what it ends up asking is, is it right that history and older things are forgotten? So um, <laughs> We at the museum obviously feel that they are not, <laughs> or that it's not right that they're forgotten. So that's why we um, have all of these uh, archives digitized. We have about 35,000 pieces of archival material that cover um, Kenny Bunk's history. And tonight we are sharing just a couple um, peeks at that history. And of course, if you've been tuning in for the last uh, two sessions of this, um, you'll notice that I've been missing quite a few of the years that my sister has read out. So we're going to see if we have better luck this time. Um, <laughs> my sister's going to uh, hit uh, the Google button and it's going to produce a random year. And we're going to see if we can find something in our archives. Okay, what's the first number? All right, first number this time is 1889. Okay. <laughs> oh, I do have something. All right, that's exciting. So um, let me remember what I'm doing here. Share the screen. 1889. Oops. Okay. Okay, so here it is, 1889. Um, January 4th. So on the first day of this month, work has begun on the expected new shoe factory by the landing of stone for its foundation. The next day, the ground was formally broken, the day being pleasant with but little, if any, frost in the ground and no snow, quite a large number of our citizens met to witness the operation. The site is on a flat piece of ground owned by the Leatherboard Company on Water Street, so again, this is downtown for those know where Water Street is. About halfway from Main Street to the Boston and Main Railway. It is expected that a branch or spur of railroad, um, he says railing, but I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> railroad, yeah. will be laid from Boston and Main Railroad to Water Street for the use of the factories on or near the river. The directors have decided to call for one fifth of the subscription on or before January 15th to make payment easy for subscribers. So um, looks like there was a shoe factory being built and I wouldn't be surprised if, um, I guess that's a little long. So the, the other shoe factory that we just heard about in the last session had opened in 1918 um, as the La what is now the Lafayette Center. So it might be that one, it might not be since he doesn't name what it is <laughs> or who the owners are. So, um, so anyway, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So uh, around this day in 1889, a new factory was being built in downtown Kennebunk. Oh. All right, what is, I'm sorry, I just noticed the very bottom of this picture, January 23rd, it said, he begins to say, it is reported that a cattle disease called tuberculosis oh. has, and then I don't know what the next entry is, but um, doesn't sound great for the town. Pending doom. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, what's our next, uh, what's our next year? All right, let's get a good one. No, nope, we did 1900 already, uh, 1911. Okay, that, let's see. I think we're gonna hit the newspapers for that one. Hit the news. <laughs> <laughs> 1911. Okay, here it is, let's get this superfluous stuff out of the way um okay oh this is looks like a good one yeah we hit a good Super one everyone 
<laughs> finally got something. Nice. The Eastern Star of 1911. Um, the editor, I don't know who he was here. Well, the proprietor, Lester Watson. He knew that um, those of us in 2020 would be looking back and trying to find something. <laughs> yep. um, all right. December 29th, 1911, Eastern Star. Here he is, 1911 in brief, the chief events of a notable year. <laughs> wow. Short that daily means. record. Oh, wow. That's not a short daily record at all. It goes <laughs> every month. <laughs> it's every month. Holy every, wow. look, seemingly every day of every month almost <laughs> yes wow what a what a gathering that's actually pretty <laughs> impressive um well wow. let's see i'm going to just pick something at random yeah unfortunately as a historian um my eye is more drawn to all the kind of doomsday things so i'm going to try yep. to ex- avoid the word explosion that i can see in the <laughs> fourth column over over july um <laughs> let's see so in july the first one says heat wave beginning of a spell of intense heat throughout the northern and eastern states Mm. also in july they're on this or number seven u.s great britain japan and russia signed a treaty for the preservation of the fur seal there you go pretty cool that's interesting (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty neat wow geez a lot of a lot of these are if people are killed or hurt unfortunately yeah (laughs) Oh, there's a re- report of uh, football. Princeton defeated Harvard. Oh. Oh. Minnesota defeated Chicago. Don't know if that's in, wow. of importance to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if um, this was just this year or if any other uh, newspaper ever did that, like a yeah. daily record of what happened every day. I suppose one. that would be a little more easy for... Um, for uh, uh, newspapers to do since they have headlines from oh, yeah. a weekly anyway. That's right. <laughs> Someone's <phone> calling the museum. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, looking at the kind of the ads that were happening around that time, now that the holidays are over, I'm prepared to give prompt and careful attention to any and all repair work. So this person is a jeweler and an optician, uh, Barrett. Right hmm. now. Guess. <laughs> cutting lenses um, is no different than jewels yeah <laughs> that's a um, good point <laughs> uh so uh, i this just caught my eyes well fresh fish of all kinds obviously yeah. there's a um oh there's a there was a market on water street uh meats of all kinds um but then if you look over here in the uh in this little King Solomon's Mines article, oh. highlighted a bunch of stuff. Um, there's mention of Rhodesia. So that's another thing that's always interesting to look th- through um, the old newspapers is you see uh, obviously different countries and different uh, things that were happening all over the world that we only read about now. And people were experiencing firsthand uh, at that time, which I always think is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> cough syrup <laughs> <laughs> wow wow they were big on reporting history which is kind of cool um Ford. Again, the kenny Bunk and biscuiti <laughs> oh, oh yeah model ford nice uh or, yeah um cool so i'm just going to mention this one because my sister and i grew up in north andover so it just <laughs> came up this way Miss Margaret Haley is at home from North Andover for the holiday vacation. So that's wow. <laughs> very Quite random. Quite the trip. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there was a, a Christmas wedding, oh. 2.30 p.m. Christmas Day. Mrs. Howard, Mr. Howard Chester, Wakefield, and Miss Ethel May Bowden were married in their new home on Pleasant Street, um, oh. which is one of the most lovely streets here in Kennebunk, I have to say. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. What's our uh, what's our next uh, oh, yeah. next number or year? Let's see. Next year is 1888. Okay. Of course, I just blocked myself from being able to see anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to Andrew Walker's diary now. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. I just want to make sure I can, I selected the right one. Can you see 1888 journal entry? Uh, yes, indeed. Okay, so January 2nd, 1888. Um, I think he's writing about 
his own journal or his own diaries that he's kept. So January 2nd, he says, looking back over these manuscript volumes, there are items noted better to have omitted. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There are others which many people would not willingly let die. Wow. If similar records made in the last century could now be found, although the larger part might amount to little or nothing, yet we should know a great deal well worth knowing of which we are now entirely ignorant. So um, that sounded like a riddle in a way, but I think he was, <laughs> I think he was saying that he was proud of himself for writing this journal um, because we would know so much more if other folks kept journals in the past. And that's certainly true. I mean, you think of, um, I always think of this uh, today where not many of us write journals anymore. And so people a hundred years in the future only have, newspapers or social media reports or things to go on so um it it would be hard to know what people were thinking and doing at the time (laughs) yep surely (laughs) um so here he goes on it says it appears to me that every large community needs at least one person to gather up and preserve the details of its career against the day when they will be doubly prized well well while doubly difficult or impossible to get Taken as a whole, I hope these volumes of mine will not be a discredit to me, as I have preserved in them many incidents, accidents, and casualties that otherwise would have passed into oblivion. We all wish to be remembered with honor. Wow, that's a nice uh, sentiment right That's a nice sentiment, truly. (laughs) I like that. Thank you, Andrew Walker. Thank you, yeah, that was nice. I think we can all agree. I was going to mention that also in 1888, this isn't really a newspaper article, but um, to, to folks who, I guess, follow weather and things like that, which, you know, now we're in the middle of winter, um, <laughs> or you guys are in New England, I'm not, but the uh, <laughs> uh, 1888 uh, was one of the largest um, blizzards that ever hit America. Um, oh, it was wow. actually in 1888 in March. Um, oh, and it wow. covered all the way down to like, you know, Washington DC area up to Canada. Um, and it was like four feet of snow. Um, before the days of the, you know, snowplow. So. Oh, goodness. Wow. That's pretty amazing. I didn't yep. know that. Yeah. Um, so I was going to say, if I had uh, the actual Andrew Walker diaries, which we have in the back here, I would actually flip to that date to see what they said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if anybody's interested in doing that, obviously you can come here to the museum to read them, but the original copies are uh, housed at the Kenny Bunk Free Library across the street from us. Um, And you can also find the original copies online. So it means that like I was struggling to read Mary Varney's handwriting, you have to struggle to read Andrew Walker's handwriting, but they are there online uh, from the Kenny Bunk Free Library for you to peruse. So if anybody wants to dive into uh, March 1888 and see if he mentions anything about uh, the blizzard, please look it up and send it to the museum. All right, let's do one last uh, one last year that was going on with Can You Bunk History. All right, the- let's see what we can find. Um, try and decide which one would be more fun. <laughs> 1854. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. I think the 1920s or 30s were a little depressing. In some <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> oh, this is kind of nice. Okay, so 1854. Uh, we're once again going to Andrew Walker. Um, and he actually wrote on January 1st, 1854, New Year opens with another snowstorm, just as we were talking about, (laughs) but not violent this time. As the walking is extremely bad, not more than 30 persons attended at the congregational church in the forenoon, and the afternoon meeting was not held, except at the Methodist Hall. Uh, At about 9 p.m., the steam whistle attached to the railway engine announced that the Western Mail had at length arrived. So, (laughs) snowstorm that day in 1854. And I think we're filming this a little early, um, but I believe we're supposed to have a storm um, similar, or (laughs) I don't know if it's snowing, but having a storm today as well. So, same as 1854. Yep. All right. I'm just going to stop our share. And uh, I want to wish everybody, um, Catherine as well, uh, wish everybody a happy new year. I hope you enjoy the uh, Kenny Bunk um, 
wild blueberry ball drop coming off the steeple of the uh, Unitarian Universalist First Parish Church right across the street uh, shortly here. So uh, make sure you tune into that about 1155. We will be back with you um, and we will all ring in 2021 and say goodbye to 2020, whether it was a good year for you personally or whether it was a bad year for all of us shared Mm -hmm. um really wishing you a very <laughs> happy uh holiday season and better 2021 thanks everybody